do the following mapping of values represent functions? And here we've got A and B, and in pink we've got two different mapping of values. Well, what is a mapping of values? A mapping of values takes a series of inputs and it designates each one of those inputs some outputs. So here we've got the inputs here and we've got outputs. And we know whether something is an input or an output because inputs, uh, we have these arrows and these arrows indicate that it takes an input. So here it takes this one and it, it, this, this arrow points to nine. And so what we have is here, if we have an input of one, and because the arrow is in this direction, it ends up at the nine, then this is an output. So this, these, map, these two mapping of values, or this mapping of values, this could be a function. Uh, let's quickly revisit what a function is. A function is, it's like a, like a little box almost, where we have an input, and we put this input into the box, and this box gives us an output. And if for every input, when we input it into the box, it just gives us a single output, then we know that this, this box is a function or whatever we're looking at is a function. Uh, alternatively, if for a single input, we, we input that into our function and we get two different outputs, then that is not a function because a function, the, the fundamental thing about a function is that if you, you give that function or you input in that function, an input, it must only give out one output, not two or more outputs. So here, let's consider whether this mapping is a function. So here we've got these series of inputs. So let's have a look here. So here this says that if we put one into this, this little machine or this, this little function, then we get out nine. So here we've put in an input and we've got a single output and that output is nine. So it looks, it looks so far as if this could be a function. Let's have a look at our second value here, our second input two. So if we, if we input two into this function, we get seven. Again, we've, we've got one input and we get a single output. So this is looking good so far. This looks like, again, it, it could be a function. Let's go down to our third input here. We've got to check every input to determine whether it's a function. So we've got three as an input and three, we follow this line and figure it and find that that 12 is our particular output. So it looks, looks like, again, we've just got one input and we've, we've delivered one output here. So this could be a function. And finally, let's look at four. So if we put four into this mapping of sets, it, it says that we get out 12. So again, that's just a single input and we get just a single output, which is 12. Now here, if we input three or if we input four, either way we get 12. But that's fine, we can have that as part of the function. So pretty much what this says is if we input three into this, this little box, so this box is our mapping of sets, then we get a single output of 12. And similarly, if we were to input four into our little mapping uh, thing here, we would get uh, our, our mapping of values, we would also get 12. In both cases, this follows the definition of a function in that just a single input. Whenever we put an input in here, we just get a single output. So we've shown that for each one of these inputs, each one of these inputs is only associated with one output. And because of that, we can say that this is indeed a function. So we can say, yes, yes. Do the following mapping of functions represent, or do the following mapping of values represent functions? Well, certainly A does, this is a function. And that's because for, there, there is no input where we can input this into uh, this mapping of sets, which delivers two different outputs, two or more different outputs. Each one of these inputs is associated with only one output. Consequently, it's a function. Let's, look at, look, let's have a look at B here. So B, we've got a, a similar setup, just different arrows and different values. So here again, here are our inputs and here are our outputs. And let's discover whether or not this is a function. So here we have an input of three, and that input of three is just associated with a single output of three. Now again, because the input and the output are the same, that's fine. Here essentially we've got three into this little box, into this mapping of sets, delivers a single output. And it's okay, it's, it's fine that, that these, these, the input and the output here 
are the same. A function, th this could be a property of a function, that's completely fine. The important bit is it, to, to analyze is whether each input is associated with one or two or more outputs. So here it's associated with only, only one output. Consequently, this could be a function at this point. Okay, let's have a look at 17. So this is an input. Sure enough, 17 is associated with just a single output. That's five. So here, again, we, we could be facing a function. What about 19? Well, if we consider 19, we've got two arrows coming out of 19, which means that 19 as an input could either be associated with the output 7 or the output 5. In other words, if we substitute 19 into this mapping of sets, this mapping of sets doesn't give us a single value. Instead, it gives us two different values. It says that 19 could be associated with the output of 7 or it could be associated with the output of 5. A function cannot have this property. We have an input, which when we input it into this mapping of sets delivers two different outputs. And a fundamental rule of a function is that each input is associated with only one output. So consequently, this is not a function. We could go and check 43, but we needn't because once we've determined that there is at least one input that's associated with two or more outputs, we can say with certainty that this, this mapping of values is not a function. So here we can say, no, this is not the function. And we're done.